You never saw kids with mental disabilities really in the community. They were in the closet or in an institution and some families kept them at home but they still never brought them to a public facility because they hadn't they, they weren't socially acceptable and people would make fun especially other kids. But that all started to change in 1962 when Eunice Kennedy Shriver started a summer day camp at her home, giving kids with intellectual disabilities the opportunity to participate in sports. Around the same time in Chicago, a woman named Anne McGlone, now Illinois Supreme Court Justice Ann Burke, was starting a program of her own. She was a phys ed teacher working for the Chicago Park District when, without any formal training, she started taking in kids with mental disabilities, giving them a place to play and learn. I was just a kid doing what I liked to do, you know, playing basketball and volleyball and teaching kid, kids who couldn't really ever, who never did it, what I liked. Anne was a traditional physical instructor, so at that point we didn't have people hired in special recreation solely for individuals with disabilities. And so Anne first was the first one to be taking in children with disabilities. I wanted to teach them how to bowl, so we went bowling. I twirl a baton, so I, they, the girls learned how to twirl a baton and tap dance and all those kinds of things. Not just throw a ball and hit a ball or to run and jump. We learned everything. And that was just the beginning. One night after her bosses at the park district watched the kids put on a play for the closing night of camp, a grand idea was born. They said, what can we do to make people see what they can do and get more people to come to the parks? And I said, put on a track meet, That put on what we did today, you know, what, put on a show. But to do so, she needed money. So in 1967, the 22-year-old Burke took a leap of faith, proposing what was supposed to be a one-time citywide track meet. Southern Illinois professor Dr. William Freeberg, who had already been helping Shriver with her camps, suggested that Burke write to Shriver and the Kennedy Foundation for funding, which she did, then flew to Washington, D.C. to meet with her personally, returning home with a $25,000 commitment. She already loved the idea, but she made me rewrite the proposal, but then gave the money and said, go do it. And it was Mrs. Shriver who said, oh, we can make this a, a national event. And I said, well, how are we gonna get people to come? She said, don't worry about that. She'll, she'll take care of that. And that she did. What they ended up with was a thousand athletes from 26 states and Canada to participate in the very first International Special Olympics held at Chicago's Soldier Field on July 20th, 1968. Today, all of you young athletes are in the arena. Many of you will win, but even more important, I know you will be brave and bring credit to your parents and to your country. Let us begin the Olympics. Thank you. It wasn't a big splash because the press didn't cover it. There was nobody in, in the stands other than some parents. But pulling off an event of that magnitude, with so many athletes excited to compete, made a huge splash with Shriver, who afterward made an announcement that would come as a surprise to everyone. The Special Olympics would expand and become more of a national event. The International Special Olympics is now in nearly 170 countries, changing many lives and perceptions along the way. Quietly, in over 47 years, it has transformed the world.